Thank you very much. Now we'll pass on the floor to Glenn Suba, who is a person that inspires this issue of water and sensi uh, sensitivity and has a great uh, experience as a carioca, so he knows how to talk about Rio de Janeiro. So without any further ado, I pass on the floor to the great warrior in this war. Uh, good afternoon, good evening. I am Glenn Silva. I was born in South Africa, was raised in Australia, and arrived in Rio de Janeiro in 1993. In 1995, I uh, suffered from hepatitis surfing in the beaches of Rio de Janeiro. And the search for information on how I had hepatitis by surfing started my journey of working the area with the environment up to now. So, as you all know, 70% of the sewage in Rio is uh, thrown to the seas. But I'll go back and explain, I mean, my speech will tell you our relationship with the rivers and our attitudes, behaviors, and our way of living on Earth that is seriously affecting the oceans. Uh, and these imp the, the impacts that the oceans are facing, are, are having, come from the hydro-basins of the planet. For those of you who don't know, a basin is a set of small rivers, secondary tertiary rivers, that uh, flow eventually to the sea with the gravity in, uh, Influence. The main base here you can see uh, in Brazil is the Am from the Amazon River. But Br all over Brazil there are many hydro basins, like in uh, Itajaí River that Jorge uh, Pimentel explained, and then there is the basin of. of Vale do Ribeira, the basin of Vale do Paraíba, uh, from with the Paraíba River, uh, San Francisco River, and so on. I will explain, giving a small example of one of the places that I love the, base, the best in Brazil, Peninsula do Maró, do you know this place? So probably you agree with me that this is heaven, this is paradise, it's one of the most beautiful places on Earth, but every day, every day, the day starts with uh, the high seas in different colors, very plas a lot of plastic. And I spent 30 days there in Marau, Tepus de Fora, one of the most beautiful places on Earth, and I could see this phenomenon every day. When the day starts, you have a lot of small particles of plastic, some uh, uh, tur uh, turtles were dead, and as I am an activist in this field of preserving the beaches and the oceans, I helped uh, funding an international organization in Rio and Brazil called Surf Rider Foundation. Do you know that? And I was very active in big mobilizations of cleaning the beaches and analyzing the water, testing the water. So at the uh, coastline ecosystems and the relationship with the oceans, I know it very well. I know this subject deeply. So this phenomena in Peninsula do Marau, I could see that there were no people on the beach and I would like to find out where this plastic was coming from because I know that on the north you have 
uh, Morro de São Paulo and Boiteba, they suffered the same. Because, but you don't have a lot of people on the beach leaving plastic there. This plastic comes from the ocean. It comes from uh, the hydro basins nearby that flow to the stream, and this plastic becomes a deposit on the beaches on the region. So I keep asking fishermen and people, and I found out that the main river influencing this region is. Rio Contas. Rio de Contas is the river that flows to Itacaré. But Rio de Contas, up before getting to Itacaré, goes through 86 municipalities. And I don't know if you know uh, the country region of Bahia, but garbage collection there doesn't work. And that region is like the toilet of Brazil. You have a lot of rain and a lot of uh, garbage and the lack of environmental awareness. So this garbage that people put uh, at their doors is taken away. They go through the rivers and they end up go flowing there to, on the ocean stream and being deposited in, on the beaches at Peninsula do Marau. Consequently, a lot of turtles are dead every day. I don't know if you know, but there is a data that 80% of all the marine turtles all over the world has some kind of plastic in their uh, bodies, inside their bodies. And in some places in the Pacific Ocean, you have uh, six particles of plastic to one particle of plankton. So, a, a strong change is happening on the oceans due to our actions on Earth. I know, uh, and with my participation in the Surf Rider Foundation, our uh, current president, okay, the Surf Rider Foundation is not active anymore, but I was part, uh, I took part in some international conferences, and the current president is a, a, a man called Mark Spoden, who is also the president of Oceans Foundation, which is the leader in deep research on uh, fishing all over the world and the impact of global warm and acidification of the oceans and etc. But the point, what is happening here, and that I was talking about our actions and attitudes on Earth are impacting the sea, is uh, that if I consider my religion, for example, my religion is the belief on Gaia, on the system of the living planet, all the microorganisms and uh, uh, macroorganisms and collective awareness of this celestial body that is uh, surrounding us and the solar system, it has life. And the rivers, uh, water is the uh, blood of the planet. And we are 70% composed by water. We have a sacred and intrinsic relationship with water and with all the water on the planet. 70% of the water surface is water, oceans. So I, I believe it's not by chance. But I don't know if you know how to answer that big answer. Oh, we have the Amazon, the lungs of the planet where all the oxygen is generated. No, that's wrong. 65 up to 70% of the oxygen that is generated in the planet is through phytoplankton in the ocean. So, if we hear that is a drastic change in the ocean, we are threatening life in the planet, our ability of existing. So it's time for us to bring things to a deep thought and reflection. We are here in a global summit to rethink, to develop new technologies and projects 
for a new system, a new model of living. But our relationship with water and the rivers is very precarious. And this comes from the time that we, if you see at a hydrographic bay that goes through an agricultural region, a lot of times the whole region there in the ecosystem is drastically affected by the actions of the agriculture practice there. So this is seen as a great barrier reef which is in different regions of this uh, barrier reef is getting whitened because of the acidity as well as the action of the, the agriculture and the mining that is in a region close by. So, I think it's very pertinent that we raise the issue of the water here in this conference right after the Olympic Games because the main legacy to the environment that had been promised by the Olympic International Committee as well as the local committee and the state and has even been influential in this issue that that's why Rio got the Olympic Games to be played here. So of course this big dream of cleaning the Guanabara Bay and the lakes, the, the, the Lagoa and Jacarepaguá, this was supposed to be the legacy, but 100% of the legacy of the Olympics, they haven't been fulfilled. None of them has been fulfilled. So unfortunately, the biggest sports event came, happened, and the best one is about to happen, which is the Paralympics, because I didn't care about the Olympics, because I believe the big superheroes are the Paralympic athletes. But I think that one of the issues that we could get from this global summit is that we need it needs to permeate all the actions is our relationship with the water because the water is sacred. There's no life without water. That's basically it. Thank you.